Hello everyone, this is Anthony Good, K3NG. This is the second in a video series on Arduino multitasking. Today I'm going to show you how to deal with serial I.O. I have our sketch from the first video in the series where we're blinking the LEDs, and I've made some changes to this, adding serial I.O. I've basically added a command line interface. I'll go into my serial terminal program. This is the same as the serial monitor in the Arduino IDE. And the Arduino comes back with a little welcome message there. Hi there, very friendly. And I'm going to hit the Q key and send the command. And all this simply does is just tell you what LED is on right now. Very simple. No carriage return or anything, just sending one keystroke. So how do we do that? I have the LED pin definitions up here. You saw that in the first video. I've added some defines here for serial port settings. I'm using the first serial port on the Mega, and uh, you can obviously use this uh, sketch with a, a Uno as well. I set the serial port baud rate here, and I've moved the variable for the current LED into global variables. You may recall before I had that as a local variable in the service LEDs subroutine. I've added two additional subroutines here, initialize serial and service serial port. Initialize serial is uh, very simple. We just uh, fire up the serial port, set the appropriate baud rate, and we send that uh, welcome message just to let us know that the Arduino is there and alive. Service serial port, that's called by loop continually. We uh, look to see if there are any bytes available in the serial port. If there are, we go in and we read that byte, and we look at that byte, and if it is either a uppercase Q or a lowercase Q, then we go ahead and print the message here that the uh, LED is on. We have a switch statement here with the various cases for our, our state variable current LED on, and depending on what LED is lit at the time, we print red, yellow, or green. So quite simple, and this is very easy to deal with in our multitasking design here because we're looking for just one byte. If we get the wrong byte, if the user presses the A key by accident or return or something, this will just silently ignore that and we will keep on running. The LEDs continue to blink as we're querying the unit. There's no interruption of that blinking. What happens, though, if we want to make this command line interface a bit more sophisticated? What if we want to do commands that are multi-character? For example, instead of doing a Q command, let's say we wanted to have it that the user had to type out the word query and hit return. A challenge in dealing with this is, if we come into here and we see bytes available, are all of the bytes available? Is, is the Q-U-E-R-Y return all in the buffer right now or not? More than likely, we're going to come into here and we may see one byte, but we don't see the rest of the bytes just because the Arduino is just so much faster in executing service serial port than the user can type. A common approach might be to see if there's bytes available and we got the Q, okay, let's wait for the U, let's wait for the E, the R, the Y, the return. However, we're going to be stuck here in service serial port if we do that approach, and the LEDs are not going to continue to blink in their sequence that we want them to. We're basically stuck within this subroutine. That's a bad thing. We don't want to do that. So let's take a look at how we can actually accomplish this and still continue to service the LEDs properly. Here's our sketch updated with a lot more code and service serial port. So as you can see, I've added some local variables, static, so they are not cleared out after we exit the service serial port subroutine. I have a char buffer here, 32 characters, and a variable here called serial incoming buffer bytes. As the user types stuff in and it comes into the serial port, we're going to put it into this buffer and we increment the buffer bytes so we know how many bytes we have in this char array. So as before, we're looking to see if there are any bytes available in the serial port. If there are, we read one byte. We print that uh, byte out just so the user can see their typing coming back at them. If the character coming in is not a new line or a carriage return, we go ahead and add it to our buffer. We do a little check here and just make sure that we're not overrunning our character buffer. If we have less than 32 bytes in there, we go ahead and add it. We uppercase it 
This will make things easier down further when we're doing the string comparison. On the current byte, we set the current byte in the char buffer to the byte that just came in, and we increment our byte counter. So we do that if the character is not a new line or not a carriage return. If we have a carriage return or a new line, or if we've hit the end of our buffer, we go ahead and process the buffer. Here we check to see is the first character a Q, is the second one a U, E, R, Y. Did the user type in query? And we've done all uppercase. We don't have to deal with uppercase, lowercase, because up in this line, before we put it in the char array, we uh, uppercased the incoming byte. And here it is as before. If we've received the query string, we go ahead and print out what uh, LED is on. And I also added another little feature here. If they type in a command that we can't decipher if it's not the query command, we just tell the user syntax error. At the end of this, we have to set the serial incoming byte buffer bytes back to zero. So this essentially clears out the buffer. We just say we don't have any more bytes in the buffer and we can fill up the buffer again with user input and process it. One thing to note here, each iteration of service serial port, we only process one byte at a time. So if for some reason this serial port would get flooded with a bunch of bytes, we're not going to be bogged down in service serial port. We'll just process one byte, we exit, we go back to loop, we service the LEDs, and then service serial port gets called again, we process another byte. We could very well do a while here instead of an if. What a while would do is if there were multiple bytes available, it would process the first byte, the while would continue to be true because there's bytes available. It would process the next one, the next one, the next one. In some circumstances, you may want to do that, but in this particular case, we don't ever want to get bogged down on service serial port if there's a bunch of bytes in there because we risk not going back to loop in time to service the LEDs or other things that we may be doing within loop that are time sensitive. So I have kept this as an if, so we process just one byte at a time. Over here at the serial monitor, just to show you that the code works, I will type in query and our Arduino tells us what LED is on. I can type that in all caps as well. It does not care. It is case, oops, there I typed the wrong thing, and you'll see syntax error. And as I'm doing this, I'll just send a bunch of returns. The Arduino continues to blink the LEDs in sequence, no interruption whatsoever. I hope this video helps you out, and I hope you join me for the next installation of the series. Thank you.